Hello and welcome to another video. So this will probably be our last Havencraft video, at least for a little while. We're going to take a little break from Havencraft, I think, unless I find something super interesting. But this one is actually an unlimited Havencraft deck, so this is a little bit different. It's got some interesting cards in it, mainly because the topping consists of many, many different legendaries. So it is a super expensive deck, with most of the low end being gold and pretty much all of the top end being legendaries. Actually, looking at this deck... There is not a single silver or bronze card to be seen. Everything is gold or legend or higher, which is pretty shocking, honestly, when you think about it. But it was a lot of fun to play. It's got a lot of interesting cards, like Prince of Darkness, of course, um, God Sworn, Heavenly Igus, all at one, just as kind of different finishes, along with the Bahamut, of course. Tutankhamun, a card I haven't actually got to play around with much. And everything else in the deck is just pretty much Storm Damage, Tanko, Heal sort of style, which is a lot of fun as well, especially with Summit Temple. So I thought, this deck... Looks like it could be some fun. It's super high value. Let's give it a go and get right into it. So our first, this whole video is actually going to be Crushing Shadow, I think. That'll probably be what I'll actually title it. This deck does a pretty astounding job at beating Shadow almost at every turn they have, which with the amount of clears isn't a huge surprise. Both healing and clears do an amazing job at dealing with the mid-shadow that's currently on the um, ladder, so definitely not a big surprise at all. Plus, this is just designed to be a fun little video. We're not doing, you know, full-on matchups for this deck. It is just kind of focusing on beating out the shadow decks with this, so why not? White Fang Temple is looking to be a pretty nice turn 3 play. It's a good way to get that early healing set up so that you can potentially have some massive damage go down with Tenkos. I did mention in my previous video, won't be covering many Tenko decks, and this is pretty much the only major Tenko deck that we'll actually be covering with the Haven decks for at least a fair while. We probably won't be looking at anything Tenko related until next expansion. So we've set up a nice board, we've got our healers on board. Prince of Catacomb is looking to be a little bit of a problem, but shouldn't be the end of the world for us. As we do have a fairly good board. And they are going into turn 5, where there isn't really a threat. So a Light Hind is actually going to be pretty much perfect for this setup. Because they aren't going to be able to drop anything too major. This is where going first against Shadow always works in your favour, because they can't get to their Gremory too early. So they've got a nice board. We're gaining all our heals, we've got a 6-6 six, six body. They are most likely going to take this out. They only really need to throw an Evo down to kill it. I mean, we've pretty much got a perfect follow-up for this turn. We've got a nice 6-5 body to really push some damage out. We've got something like Tribunal or maybe just a Moon and Sun play, looking at the fact that we did draw another heal. So we're going to be able to keep ourselves at fairly decent health, clear out at least one of these skeletons, and hopefully limit what their Grammary can actually do because they need to focus on clearing my board. Like, I'm pretty much predicting at this point in the match, I was predicting, that Gremory would be the predominant play, but luckily that didn't end up being the case. Whether they were deliberately holding off or not, I'm not sure, but Gremory didn't end up being the play they went for. But even if it was, we would have had an immediate gene, gene play up next, and I don't think they could have handled that. Which, clearly by this board, is going to be our play anyway, so it's always good. And we can hold on to the Decree to deal with something bigger. As I mentioned, this deck does do an amazing job at just really stopping Shadow from developing its boards when they need them and getting too much big damage on you because you can pretty much heal it all back. It does mean you are playing a slower game and you're looking to kill them with something like your big drops. So all we really need now is to hold off. We've got our Heavenly Argus, we've got our Bahamut, so they're going to be really good cards. There isn't much they can probably do, especially with these really low drops. So it's looking like a really good Heavenly Argus turn. This is going to probably be our finisher now that it's got a 10-10 damage stat on it. And we can actually get our 6-6 out as well, which is going to have to be removed. It honestly would not surprise me at all if we saw a Demon Lord come down. There we go, Demon Lord. So we have the Bahamut set up, which is looking to be fairly good, although we could just go for the Decree Moon and Sun play as well. As we don't really have too much that we need to do. 
Oh, actually, there we go. Even better. Beacon of Salvation. A perfect way to deal with this without having to waste two of our biggest removal cards. And we can also set up the Moon and Sun as well, which, I mean, is always good. When you can set up a Madarasu, it does a pretty decent job at dealing with things. Like, Amaterasu and Sukiomi are both such great cards. Unfortunately, they were just one shot. They nearly had me with that Deathly Tyrant. It was so close. Like, that Deathly Tyrant into Concede would have literally killed me if they had have had an Evo. Fortunately for me, they ended up having to use them on some of my other threats, but geez, it was definitely not something I wanted to see there. So, this hand's looking a lot more Summit Temple orientated. Mainly because we drew Summit Temple and it opened up plus two big drops, which we had to mulligan because we don't need them in this Shadow matchup this early on. So we did get the Gem Princess, which is pretty perfect in the Shadow matchup. It's a nice ward, it curves out nicely on six normally, and you can actually take advantage of its heal effect pretty well. So we don't really have any play outside of Summit though. Which fortunately this deck does a pretty good job of taking advantage of, similar to our Summit deck previously. So there is the Moon and Sun play. I like getting that out. It's such a good card. Being able to completely replay it really helps you in the late game, which is what this deck really favours doing. Plus, we've pretty much set it up so we can go for our White Fang Temple next turn, and then probably straight into Tenko. Along with the fact that we can clear the 1-2 and not have to worry about their Evo. Of course, you realise we are going first again, so we didn't actually get to face a Shadow going first, which I don't think, honestly, would have made that much difference to us personally, as our setup was fairly decent either way. We would have been able to deal with most of this in a very similar fashion to what we have. And we would have kept healing regardless, so there we go, we get our Tenko down, we get our heal, we're going to ping something, it ended up just being a 1-1, which wasn't great. But we've got a nice setup for turn 6. The one thing I like about this deck is playing against Shadow, it's just a lot of fun. Tenko vs Shadow matchups, Light vs Dark was always something I enjoy playing, and seeing that Tenko can always deal with them is usually what I love the most. So, not bad, we got our Gem Princess. I was really hoping we wouldn't have to deal with the 1-2 killing our Gem Princess. Unfortunately, as you're about to see, that becomes a real reality as our ping effects don't quite land the way I would have liked them to. Still not the worst possible outcome, but definitely not the best. I am Belenus, the you Another Belenus and a Prince of Catacomb, really bolstering this board out. Not too big of an issue, I do just decide to kill off the Belenus first. That way we can draw out a little bit. Go for the Heavenly Knight because it's a big body. At that point I'm debating on whether it was actually a good idea to kill the Belenus or not, but I mean, who cares, we're going to go for it anyway. If I had have, um, attacked with the 6 instead, I actually would have had them down to 5, and they would have been dead to Moon next turn anyway. Which would have been honestly much better, but eh, beggars can't be choosers at this point. I was originally planning to throw the dragon and then throw Decree down, but I obviously yeah, changed my mind in favour of Heavenly Knight, realising that I can actually do a lot more damage that way. So, if I planned the move out a little bit more, I definitely could have had a much better turn. So, they did end up leaving up this. Unfortunately, I completely forgot Summit Temple was up and shouldn't have attacked like that, but, I mean, didn't leave us in the worst possible situation yet either. It just means this game was running a lot longer than it probably could have. But, considering they had Lady Grey, they probably would have healed up even out of my moon range earlier. So, we do have another Tenko. That's always good, especially with the White Fang. It means we are going to be able to ping off a fair, fairly large amount of these followers. I was hoping to hit the Lady Grey. Missing that was a little bit of a disappointment. But, I mean, we also have Bahamut, which would be a nice next turn. So it's looking like next turn will be a Bahamut play. We are only on 4 health though, and they will definitely, definitely be in range of using Deathly Tyrant if they have it. So it's definitely something that I was worried about. Unfortunately, I didn't really have any play. All I could do was make this play and hope for the best. We have got them down to 5, which means they are in moon range. Dim Lord Ecta is good. Definitely would rather see that than see a huge Deathly Tyrant come down. They are going to clear out our Bahamut. 
but that's going to be a pretty big wasted effort at this point, as Moon is just going to win us the game. Five damage straight to the face. That's where Summit Temple finally gets to shine a little bit more. So I did have a lot of fun playing this deck, it was definitely one that I could enjoy for quite a while and I probably will, it's definitely got some a lot of high-end options so you can like have a lot of different games. Not every game is going to be the same which is something I really enjoy with this kind of deck. Tenko is definitely one of the core concepts and that's not surprising, it is such a good card especially in this format at the moment. Um, and the top end just gives you a lot of variety which is always great. Of course it is extremely expensive. I'd love to know exactly how many vials this is, I just can't bother to work it out at the moment. But I'm sure once I put the deck list in the description below I'll know, which will be quite entertaining as the amount of legendaries and golds is just absolutely nuts. So if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more like it, hit the like button and subscribe. You can hit the deck list in the description below if you're interested in this deck. Until next time, see ya.